Hi, I'm Tom Campbell from Cultaholic.com, joined by the Tombly Boo from In the Wrestling Garden, Adam Pacitti. Not even, what's that? It's a kids programme from off of now. You're not down with the kids. Not, not obviously. It's <laughs> no, I'm not saying that uh, all I do when I'm not here is watch children's television, but it's a major part of my upbringing and I'd like to continue to do so. I'd love to see you go to CBBC, Tom. Ideally I, next week. Do you know? <laughs> Let's do some news for a bit then, shall we? Which former WWE Cruiserweight Champions returning to the ring? Which WWE legend has signed a new deal? And Defiant Wrestling, formerly WCPW, has announced its closure. We'll get to that in a bit. But a boom! The realist guys are in the room. How are you doing? Not my words. The words of my Auntie Belinda when I went to see her last week. And the words of Enzo Amore, former WWE Cruiserweight Champion. Enzo is getting back in the ring, Adam Pacitti. Real one, please. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's returning to Northeastern Wrestling's event, Prison Break, on August the 16th. This is his first match since his run with the WWE. And it's actually taking place in the same place. It's the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. Uh, his last match there with the WWE was against uh, Cedric Alexander. So he's returning back there, first indie show. How do you feel about an Enzo Amore return, a real one return? I personally think that Enzo, and I think I might cop a bit of heat for this, I think Enzo's got stuff to offer wrestling. I agree. I think, okay, uh, as a lot of people got on his case when he was the Cruiserweight Champion, I enjoyed that run where it was just, here are some, um, the story writes itself, here are some amazing wrestlers and here is here's a loud gobby fella as your champion refusing to wrestle any of them and everybody hates him. I loved that. I genuinely did. To me, that was very much his strength. I think he's a far better hype man than he ever was a wrestler. Mm. He needs that big guy with him. Let's not forget how over Enzo and Cass were. We saw them at NXT TakeOver in London. And for me, that was like the biggest crowd reaction of the night. They were taking on the revival and they were so unbelievably over. Enzo and Cass, one of the best hot tags in the business ever, oh, truly. They were a gosh. really great pairing. And then they went onto the main roster and I felt a bit sorry for them. I, I, I don't know, obviously, there's been reports of um, Cass especially, and Enzo, in fact, uh, their backstage attitudes being very, very poor, something which Cass has recently admitted, uh, admitted as being true. But they, they went to the main roster, they had all of this hype, they came up straight after WrestleMania, people were so, so behind them. And then within like three, four months, they weren't really wrestling anymore. They were just doing backstage segments, promoting various sponsors. They were plugging KFC or Subway. Quite or quite like that golden chicken advert he was doing. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. Obviously, I, I don't know how I feel about this because I'm not a big Enzo fan or anything. I don't think he's a tremendous wrestler. I do think he needs someone with him. We, it looked like we were gonna get that because of the Ring of Honor stuff. They did the, the invasion, yeah. which was then scrapped by Ring of Honor because of the very, very negative reaction that it got. I think those two really, really do need each other. And I hope with Cass's newfound sort of, uh, his personality change, I don't know what to call it. He's, he's worked on himself a lot. He was dealing with substance abuse issues. Um, I think now more than ever, those two. I think they've matured. Well, I, I, I'm listening to, the, this, is, this all comes from uh, an interview he, that Enzo did on The Store Horseman which is a brilliant name for a podcast. I'm just gonna put it out there, lads. Mwah, you geniuses. Um, uh, but even Enzo, when he was talking, just seems like there's there's a, an air of, of maturity that wasn't there during his WWE run. So if they've got better heads on their shoulder, go and do some stuff around the Indies. And you know what? WWE love offering people contracts at the moment. It's their second favorite thing. Oh. After These, <laughs> bugging ugh. the network and making Seth Rollins cool. I think Enzo might be a long shot there. Do and reckon? just to play devil's advocate, you can't ignore the Joey Janela stuff, that weird altercation that they had outside the Blink-182 <laughs> concert as well. So has he matured? Who knows? Uh, I think if, if Eric Bischoff can work for the WWE after everything that went on in the 90s, Anything can happen at the World Wrestling Federation. So we had Chris Saban at the Performance Center this week, teaching everything he knows. And how is this for a, a gear change? Exciting times. David Heath, known to you and I as Gangrel, has been doing stuff at the Performance Center this week. There was a video that went on the, um, on the Performance Center Twitter. Gangrel genuinely looks like he's having a blast. He looks pretty much the same, doesn't he? He's a bit more... Uh bloated, shall we say, but he still looks good. He's still wrestling on the indie circuit today. And 
As far as like teaching people character goes, I can't think of too many people better, especially from the Attitude Era, yeah. than Gangrel, fanging and banging. Fanging and banging! <laughs> so, yeah, well, he's, you know what else he did? Yeah, I'll, oh, yeah. Oh, did, <laughs> it's he did naughty that, films, didn't he? He directed very, very oh. naughty films. You can check those out in the link below. That's not, not true. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Click there for Gangrel's naughty films. But this Don't is forget cool. to leave a comment of your favourite naughty, <laughs> naughty Gangrel film. And I really like the fact that we're seeing all of these unusual faces, especially Chris Saban. That's that's yeah. cool, because he didn't really have any WWE link. Gangrel obviously does. I don't think he's signed to a Legends deal, but it's nice that they're bringing in a very, very wide variety of talent to teach people various different things. Chris Saban is going to teach you something entirely different to Gangrel, that's for sure. I'm going to go to Chris Saban to learn how to, to, to master like flips off the rope and how to, to make that technical bit right. And I'm going to go to Gangrel to learn what's the best way to split, spit blood at a crowd <laughs> and how to survive coming up through a ring of fire. Best entrance of the Attitude oh, Era. I'm going to put it out there. Without a shadow of a doubt. And best entrance theme, you know. That's, oh, come on, Austin. Also, but there was so, oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> Big fan, big fan. <laughs> so WWE legend and Saudi Arabia's favourite special attraction, The Undertaker, is in the news today. According to Wrestling Observer, he signed himself a brand new contract. And to quote, it's not a, it's not a for life contract, but it might as well be a for life contract, Adam Pacitti. This is the 20 year Bret Hart deal, isn't it, essentially? That's what's going on here, except Taker's probably not going to leave for AEW anytime soon. <laughs> You've got to believe that WWE want him on their books for life. We saw the big fuss that was kicked up after uh, Taker was announced for StarCast and then pulled by WWE and the Inside the Ropes tour had to change from a speaking engagement just to uh, meet and greet. So you've got to believe that there's some clauses in there that prohibit him from doing various external work for, for other companies as well. I believe the contract uh, prohibits him from doing any non-WWE so no things. meet and greets or anything like that? Apparently so. He's I think not that, doing that any of sense. that now. I, th I think obviously back in April when suddenly he was taking on these other bookings and, and, and Undertaker's Twitter. I don't know if The Undertaker should have a Twitter anyway. He's got an Instagram. That's I what mean, I find even weird. He's not running those things, I obviously. Mean, to be fair, in the 90s, he did run a funeral parlour. <laughs> yeah. So weirder things have happened. He is a businessman. And <laughs> Undertaker's Instagram is, is a comedy thing in itself. Um, but even then, it was just like, it became very formal. It was like accepting bookings now, Undertaker at Hotmail.com or whatever. It? it was very odd. And I think it must have put, put the giblies up uh, Vince McMahon because they're Therefore, this contract was signed. It's like, no, you're with us now forever. Don't, don't do anything else, please. It goes without saying that Undertaker has a job for life in WWE. He will wrestle for as long as he wants to wrestle. Mm. There's, there's no doubt about that. And you've got to believe, based on recent performance, as far as Extreme Rules, if you put aside the Goldberg stuff, he's probably got another year or two in the ring, hasn't he? I think so. Let's not, not like a full time. No, thing. certainly not. Heck, no, no, no. Just pop up every so often. Do your bits and, and head away again. Right, who should retire The Undertaker? Let's go there. Well, at the moment, it's it, it, all eyes are on Drew, Ga uh, Drew Galloway. Yes. Drew McIntyre. Sorry, I used the wrong name. Drew McIntyre um, should be the one that retires him, really. That seems obvious. Like, like they, they've even given, they've even tantalised us a little bit with mm -hmm. it. Like, I wouldn't mind Drew McIntyre doing it. Feels like a passing of a torch, doesn't yeah. it? Too Everything else big. feels like a waste. Yeah, I can't think of many. There are, there are guys that could do with the rub. We all thought it was going to be Roman Reigns, and it wasn't Roman no. Reigns. We all thought it might be Brock Lesnar as well. So we'll see with that, but I, I think Drew is the most sensible shout. This means that if you had any hopes of Undertaker being in any TV adverts anytime soon, that's not going to happen, which is sad. Because I always thought there was room for him to do uh, an advert for a hotel chain, maybe Travelodge or Hotel Six or Motel Six. Yeah. Come stay with us, where you always rest. Oh, he's gone there. In peace. Genius. Do the eyes. Can you do the eyes? Ow. <laughs> Got a date now. And finally, some UK wrestling news. Defiant Wrestling, previously known as WCPW, has announced its closure. This came through on Twitter last night. I'm not in any position to talk about this story. This gentleman probably is. Well, I did found the company, of course. No, there's, <laughs> there is that. I got very, very emotional, actually, last night when I saw this. Defiant tweeted to each and every one of you who worked on a show, attended a show, or watched a show, thank you. 
and this was a big part of my professional career. I had a tremendous amount of fun. I will always be very, very thankful to What Culture for allowing me to be a part of that. And WCPW, for a brief period, was the hottest thing in independent wrestling, truly. You look at the levels of engagement online, the social media engagement, the, some of the views that they were doing on YouTube. Everybody was talking about this company. And they had huge, huge stars. It started off with Jay Lethal, at Built to Destroy, and the next thing you know, you've got Kurt Angle, you've got Rey Mysterio, you've got Bret Hart, and it faced an awful lot of criticism, WCPW, because of the big names that they were bringing in and because of the exposure that they already had and the audience that was there. There were lots and lots of people complaining about that, but I would argue that WCPW offered exposure to some of the greatest wrestlers in the country. People like Martin Kirby, people like Joseph Connors, Joe Hendry, B. Priestley. Those people got a huge following because of WCPW. And I think it did a hell of a lot of good for the British wrestling independent scene. And I'm really, really sad to see it go. Uh, I think some people may have been expecting this for a while, just because they went from those big names to more local talent. And the viewership certainly declined, but they were still putting on great shows. They were still putting on great rap matches. The, the wrestlers truly cared. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really sad about this because I had so much fun on a, on a personal level. I got to work with people who I genuinely consider heroes of mine. Uh, Bret Hart, as I say, Rey Mysterio, Kurt Angle, Cody Rhodes. Uh, I got put through a table by Bub Ray Dudley. That's a bucket list. I saw that. Right. I watched that, on the, I watched that online. I watched that happening is a thing. So, yeah, I guess from, from myself and, and all of us at Cultaholic, uh, thank you for those experiences and those opportunities. Um, and I, also, a shout out to the people who, who barely ever get mentioned in these, these things. Uh, Peter, especially. Matt. James Dixon, who took on a lot of the booking responsibilities, and then the people like uh, Chris Thompson, Simon Corby, the great announcers, Dave Bradshaw, who's one oh. of the best announcers in the UK, James R. Kennedy, who is also fantastic, uh, Simon Gallagher, uh, who else is there? All of the camera operators. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you very much, and it's really, really sad to see you go. Never be sad that it's over. Always smile because it happened. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.